Hello everyone and welcome back to this week's episode of Report. I'm Lucy Waller and I'm Emma Wozniak. As seen on Instagram, TikTok and various other social media platforms, the Report format advises viewers on what to read, eat, play, obsess over, recommend and treat themselves to. Each episode will focus on one letter of our report and for this week we will be looking at our favorite musical artists. All this and more on this installment of Report. So as we mentioned, we will be talking about music today, Yay! as you Absolutely. might be able to tell from our new setup. Yes, our lovely display of records that we will not be talking about, actually. Not at all. No. And you know, we also have this tiny little Bluetooth record speaker mm -hmm. um, because neither of us has a full size one no. at this time. But we wanted to contribute to the <clears> aesthetic, <throat> so we brought in what we have. Of course, yes. of course. And you know what? Let's just get right into yeah. it, I guess. Um, <laughs> Who are you going to be talking about today? I will be talking about The Last Dinner Party today. Ooh. So The Last Dinner Party is a UK sort of indie pop rock, generally alternative band. It is comprised of Abigail Morris, Lizzie Mayland, Emily Roberts, uh, Georgia Davies, and Aurora, forgive me if I butcher this pronunciation, Nishevchi? Yeah. Yeah, that's the best <laughs> that I can do right, right now. Yeah. Um, Basically, they are yeah, a five-person group, and interestingly enough, they've had some industry plant allegations thrown their way. Oh, I love an Indeed. industry plant. <laughs> so three of them met at one college, two of them met at a different college, and then they sort of linked up on the London music scene after that. Got it. Started playing gigs pretty consistently across 2021. Um, obviously, COVID impacted that before then and leading up to it, so they were kind of forced a little bit underground for a while. And then they interestingly opened for the Rolling Stones in July oh, wow. 2022 and Hosier in December 2023. Oh, wow. So two very yeah. big names. Mm -hmm, no kidding. Yeah, so that's where the industry plant allegations sort of came from. Mm -hmm, that makes um, sense. In reality, they were asked about it pretty recently for a variety interview. They sort of addressed it saying that you know, it was more having friends on the London music scene, sharing venues, sharing shows, being like, hey, do you guys want to play with us tonight? Hey, there's an open spot here, you should take it. Sort of like how all local music scenes sure. kind of work, even yeah. here in Columbus. But that was their defense, if mm -hmm. you will, to the industry plant allegations. Yeah. And they just released their first album, Prelude to Ecstasy, their Ooh. debut album. And they have around five and a half million monthly listeners on Spotify as a whole. Okay, that's so pretty respectable. Yeah. yeah, they're definitely up and coming. They also got the 2024 Brit Award for Rising Star, which is significant for sure. And yeah, I'm just going to be talking about some of their music today. Yes, please tell me more. <laughs> so um, their most popular song right now on Spotify is called Nothing Matters. It's not going to be one of the ones that I'm diving into today, okay. but it is their most popular with around 43 million listens which is kind of crazy but I decided to maybe look at two of them that are not as well known from the album yes so the first one being Caesar on a TV screen uh, this is their fourth most streamed song right now I believe with about five million streams and what I love about this song is its obvious historical and literary mm, allusion to love, Julius Caesar. You love that. You love a good historical allusion. I truly do. <laughs> and so Caesar on a TV screen is just sort of about wanting to feel powerful and influential and well-liked and sort of that driving desire. And then especially maybe framed through a feminine lens, mm -hmm. which is something that I'm going to talk about in this lyric right here that says, when I was a child, I never felt like a child. I felt like an emperor with a city to burn. I got down on my knees, begged the men in the trees to give me an answer, and then once again, forgive my <laughs> high school French pronunciation of this. I know the French speakers out there will have my head, but je ne peux pas comme ça. Better than I can That's do. the best that I can do right yeah, now. That was solid. Luckily, I'm going to be focusing mostly on the first part, which is the sort of emperor comparison. Mm -hmm. I just feel like the line, I felt like an emperor with a city to burn, yeah. it's very evocative of determination, ambition, all of these qualities that are usually seen as more positive in men than in women which I think is super interesting. Yeah. And I also sort of think that it speaks to the feeling of growing up and losing sort of some childhood bold and boldness. Mm -hmm. Sorry, some childhood boldness and sort of acquiring insecurity when you begin to understand gender roles better. I know that's mm. something that I've definitely experienced yeah. growing up and you probably have yeah, too. Yeah, no, definitely. And I wanted to ask, do you, obviously this stands out as like, 
a very, you know, um, symbolic, metaphorical sort of commentary. Um, do you find that, is that normal of their kind of musical style to have sort of these historical allegories and these sorts of social commentaries? Is that normally their kind of, their kind of style? I would say yes. Even in their dancier, more upbeat pop songs, I think Nothing Matters falls into that category. That it's still a lot of lyrics that make you think if you like look at them and really internalize them in that sense. It's sort of hidden behind a more upbeat tempo. Yeah. This song's instrumental is very like triumphant and kind of like playful, which I appreciate, but then again, you have that message at the core. Mm -hmm. But yeah, moving right along yes. to the second song that I'll be talking about, which is The Feminine Urge. So we have another illusion here right <laughs> off the bat, at least in my eyes, and I know in many other people's eyes as well. But it says, I am a dark red liver stretched out on the rocks, all the poison, I convert it and I turn it to love. Here comes the feminine urge, I know it so well, to nurture the wounds my mother held. So, Ooh. this liver <laughs> comparison, I think, is a reference to Prometheus, okay. the Greek myth of Prometheus, where I think he brought fire to humanity and then was punished by Zeus by being confined to a rock and having his liver pecked out every single day, again and again, because it kept growing back, because I believe he was immortal. So that comparison to me is very intriguing just because I think this song is describing a relationship where you're not necessarily being served as much as you're serving this other person and that can feel like a punishment and being entrapped but you just can't bring yourself to leave and i think that is very interesting yeah that's powerful <laughs> but yeah give it a listen and decide for yourself but love that song yeah. and now we can shift into emma's artist today. yes so i admittedly am going a little bit more mainstream um, than the last dinner party but nevertheless i do think that this is an artist who hasn't quite achieved maybe superstardom quite yet, though I do think she's on the right track. And that would be none other than SZA, Miss Solana, as um, her birth name is. Um, and she is um, an R&B singer-songwriter who I think is a lot more uh, familiar with the music scene, a lot um, more experienced in it than a lot of people think. Um, most people know her for her first studio debut album, Control, um, pictured on the left of the screen. But actually, um, she was producing music even before she was signed to a record label, um, which was in 2013. And she actually um, made Billboard's Top 200 in 2014 with one of those um, EPs titled Z, and it came in at number 39, which I think is pretty commendable um, for such a new artist. But like I said, it was really her first studio debut album, Control, in 2017 that really just set her on the path to stardom. Um, and it achieved number three on Billboard's charts and was nominated for four Grammys and earned her individually a nomination for Best New Artist. And then since then, I mean, she's just gone on to achieve so much. She's won four Grammys, one of which was for her 2022 sophomore album, SOS, pictured in the middle of the screen, which I'm sure is the one everybody knows her, her for best. Um, Kill Bill is on that album. Um, and then she's additionally won two Billboard Music Awards, two MTV Video Music Awards, and she was named Billboard's Woman of the Year in 2023. She stays booked and busy. Yes, she's been around. She has done it all. Um, and she's also collaborated with a bunch of really popular, um, more mainstream artists like Travis Scott, Drake, Doja Cat, and even Phoebe Bridgers. Mm. Um, so yes, she, she's really accomplished a lot in her music career thus far, and um, I hope that she continues to do uh, amazing things as she continues to grow. Um, one thing that I did want to mention um, that is particularly timely and relevant to right now is Saturn, which is her newest single, came out this year, only a few weeks ago. Um, it's pictured in the, the lower right corner of the screen. And um, fun fact, that single was actually released after a commercial for MasterCard, the credit card company, yes. that she did for the 2024 Grammys. And she played and performed that song as a part of that commercial which is very bizarre, I'm I think. I'm so glad that you mentioned that because I remember seeing that when it aired and thinking that it just was too good for yes. a commercial. To yes, be absolutely. Um, and so anyway, all of that to say, um, I just think that she has been such an impressive force, especially in R&B and as a female in R&B and as a woman of color um, in the music industry, she's just accomplished, accomplished an incredible amount. Um, and so that's why I wanted to talk about her today. Um, the first song that I want to talk about is 
Now listen, I know a lot of you Ride or Die Scissors fans are going to be like, come on, she picked the most mainstream Scissors song possible. And I will concede that this song is extremely popular, but for good reason. Mm. Um, this song, Good Days, is one of my favorites by SZA, one of um, the ones that really makes me emotional um, in the best way. I always imagine myself like driving on an expressway with the windows down and like a city skyline in my view and the sun setting and it's just such a like peaceful and like mood boosting song about finding the good parts of life throughout all the bad um, and one of the particular lyrics that I just think is so beautiful is she says she talks about how she watches the world kind of break up and fall on her but all the while I'll await my armored fate with a smile still want to try still believe in good days always and I think she does such a an impressive job of um, being really relatable and humanizing herself and you know, instead of making like broad anthem-like declarative statements to her, you know, sea of fans, I feel like the lyrics that she chooses to write make you feel like you're having like a one-on-one -on -one conversation mm -hmm. with her, um, which I can really appreciate. And simultaneously though, she balances that with having this really poetic and artistic form of lyricism um, that I think it can be kind of hard to balance between those two things. Um, so yeah, I just, I love this song. I know it's mainstream, but I can't help Forgive it. her for this one. Yeah, forgive me for it um, but yeah I would encourage anyone who doesn't know the song shame on you go listen to it right now um, and then the second one I know we talked about a little bit already um, but Saturn I wanted to give it a little bit more attention um, many fans are speculating that the release of this single marks the release of her soon-to-be third studio album um, probably by the same name but the album cover of the single has a bunch of little icons on it with words written underneath that are pre seem pretty indicative of what future song titles could be so I'm really hoping that that is indeed what happens however SZA does have a bit of a reputation for lying um, I love her for it love her despite it as do most of her fans but nevertheless she does tend to say things about releasing and dropping new albums and songs that never end up happening so who's to say if this is an actual new album or if this is just another one of those mysterious instances? I know she's just an enigma mm -hmm. and I can love her for that um, but anyway Saturn is another example of how a lot of her music um, really follows this through line of there's all of these horrible things in the world life can be really hard a lot of the time but there is still beauty and positivity throughout all of it um, which i think is such an important and relatable theme to have in her music um, and so one of the lyrics that i really wanted to, to focus on here was this idea of life being better on saturn mm -hmm. and that you know She's sick of being in her head and she's sick of the intrusive thoughts that she has and all the things going on on Earth. And she just keeps reminding herself that Saturn is out there and that things are gonna get better when she gets to Saturn. And whatever Saturn metaphorically represents for her and for each individual listener probably differs. But this idea of there being something that makes it all worth it at the end, I think is something that anybody can relate to. Um, and one of the things that I think is really similar to the last dinner party that SZA does is she um, talks about a lot of sad things. Um, clearly, she talks about a lot of things related to mental health and anxiety and stress, and yet she puts all of those lyrics to more upbeat, sort of typical R&B style music and instrumentals, um, which I think makes it a lot easier to listen to on a regular basis, as opposed to, you know, sometimes you don't want to listen to a really heavy, overwhelming, depressing, emotional ballad. Sometimes. You're okay with the sad concepts and ideas, but you want to be able to just kind of throw it on in the background and not get into like an existential crisis about it. So I think that's kind of a similarity. Yeah. Well, maybe give Saturn a listen. And I also know that the last dinner party will be coming to Columbus to Newport Music Hall in April. Ooh. So maybe check that out as well. Yes, definitely. But that was our show today, everyone. And we thank you for watching. We will see you all next week for our next episode where we will focus on what to obsess over. Bye, everyone. Bye.